Hi there, and welcome back to the Hammer Editor tutorial. It is I, John John Z Hodgson, that will be your guiding light for today again. Um, for this tutorial, we're going to uh, just go all the way through with all of the triggers and entities that you're going to need to finish up your King of the Hill map, uh, which we're currently making, if you have not been following the, uh, the other tutorials that I've done. And uh, just and that way we'll be done and you'll have a bare bones map that you'll be able to detail and finish on your own. Uh, I'm going to set out a lot more tutorials after this on doing all kinds of useful things like making water and map optimization and uh, other tricks that you're going to need to learn for really good maps. Um, but right now let's just finish up the game rules and uh, get a working map in order. Let's get started. Okay, so you can see I've taken some liberties and, and added a whole bunch of geometry here to make our hill look a little bit more interesting. It doesn't really matter though for um, your purposes right now though if you haven't added any of this stuff, so don't get worried. But you should have added this a long time back here. Our prop dynamic um, little flat hill area um, that we're going to use here. Go ahead and pull the properties up on that prop dynamic. We're going to have to give it a name. I'm going to name mine prop hill, or let's name a hill prop. I'm going to make some. You got to make these things uh, make sense and disable the shadows there. Um, so we're going to have to name anything that we want to modify in the middle of the game. Since we want to modify this uh, prop skin from neutral to red to blue, depending on who's capturing the point, we're going to need to reference it in some way. So that's what the name is for. And the shadows are just so that it won't look ugly. Okay. Now we're going to need a couple more entities. Go into your Entities tool and go find, um, type in point, and let's see here. Yes. So all the way down, once I've typed in point, uh, I've got team control point, team control point master, and team control point round. Select the team control point, and then click somewhere um, near, your, near your prop dynamic. And you may have seen this before. It's the little holographic uh, question mark that indicates that this is a capture point area. Put that right over in the exact center of your prop dynamic and we're going to modify its values. Go under the properties, give this a name. This is the actual control point entity, so type in uh, know, hill control point. And then you need to modify this value here, print name, to do set name. Um, type in whatever you want your point to be recognized as in the game. It's, it's what's going to be printed out to everybody's screen to tell everybody, hey, RB6 Elite captured the, for example, hill. Um, you can name it whatever you like. This is just what comes up on the, uh, on the screen. It's not actually the thing that we're going to reference it by. This is what we're going to be referencing everything in Hammer by. Okay, hit Apply. Now we're going to need a trigger for this entire area. The trigger is similar to our uh, trigger over there with the door and with the um, the respawn or the uh, the rege funk regenerate here in front of our uh, resupply locker. When players enter this trigger area, stuff is going to happen essentially. So let's make a trigger area around our our um, control point here. Lower that down a little bit. Make sure you have the trigger um, texture selected and then hit enter. Bam. It's in existence. We're going to need to take this and tie it to an entity. Instead of tying it to a trigger multiple like we've been doing for the doors or a funk regenerate for the um, resupply locker, we're going to need to find trigger capture area. So find that entity, click there, hit apply, and now we can modify these values here. 
for a name, I'm going to say Hill Capture, or yeah, I'm going to say Capture Area. And let's see, start disabled. No, control point is the associated control point. Or, uh, it, yeah, it's the control point associated with this area. So once players enter in this area, it needs to start talking to a control point. The only control point we have right now is our one holographic king of the hill kind of control point. So whatever you named that, I named mine uh, hill control point. Click there, and... Um, that will link the two together. Can red cap? Yes. Can blue cap? Yes. These values here, number of red players to cap, number of blue players to cap, and time to cap, all um, change the amount of time that it requires for players to capture the point. Um, this does not actually, for some reason, and it's a little bit misleading, require you to have one uh, or two or three or however many red players or blue players is to ca actually capture the point. It just changes the multiplier of how fast the point is captured when somebody steps on it. The way that Valve does it is um, normally two, two, and the time to capture is six. But you can uh, change these values however you like. You can make the cap the point capture faster or slower depending on uh, what map style you'd like to have. Hit apply and that should be good. And then we're going to get one more thing here, a team control point master under entities. And then click somewhere that you'll remember it. And then these I'm going to go ahead and modify this properties, or these properties, blah. Um, the name, I'm going to call it um, control point mass, or yeah, master. Now, the control point master is going to be placed in any game that you're going to have control points. King of the Hill, um, payload, control, or uh, you know, sequential control points, either Dust Bowl style or granary style or gravel pit style. Um, it just keeps track of all of the control points um, in, in the game. You'll need one in any game that involves control points. Hit apply and um, take a quick break and then check out the next video.